it's running fine. And it's a good time to get some baseline data with D-Trace, so when things go wrong, you have something to compare it to. Not a bad idea. Learn more about what your system is doing. So, you know, just like an MRI machine, going back to that analogy, is it the first machine your doctor's going to use, right? He's still going to take your temperature and feel your forehead and, you know, check your pulse and all that stuff. D-Trace isn't the first tool to use when you're looking at a problem. You're going to start with the stat tools that you've come to know and love over the years. SAR, IO, STAT, whatever. Get the big system picture using the stat tools. Um, and don't forget the basics. Understand what problem you're trying to solve and what do you need to measure. This is my preachy slide. I use it a lot because this is the single biggest problem you run into in a, in a production performance escalation. The technical problem isn't the hard part. It's getting everybody to agree on where they are and where they need to get to. So I'll stop preaching. Um, so these are your performance metrics. These are the things you think about when it comes to systems performance. How fast, how long, how many, and how much, right? So as a vendor, Sun and now Oracle focuses on this because we like to talk about transactions per second. We like to talk about megabytes per second and gigabits per second. Um, as, a, uh, as a sysadmin, as a DBA, as someone that works in IT, you spend a lot of time looking at this utilization, how busy is something. Not a bad thing to look at, but, um, but it, it's, not, it, it's not extremely useful these days. Uh, we'll talk about why in a little bit. Latency is something that we don't talk about enough, which is at odds because that's the thing you care about the most, latency. Latency is how long does it take to do something? How long did it take to read that file from a disk? What's my packet round trip time? Um, how long does it take to read data from memory, whatever. Latency is really what you care about when you're, looking, when you're looking at performance problems. You care about these other things too. It's not that they don't matter, but latency is the thing you care about most. Uh, and you also care about things like operation per second. So that, that's just like you know, the high order bits on, on some background stuff. Learn what you can from the stat tools and then start using D-Trace to dig down a little bit. I talked about the syscall provider being a useful place to start because, again, the system calls, uh, the system call layer is where applications meet the kernel. And it gives you a good idea of what the workload is doing to the system and where your applications are spending their time. And so it's, it's not a bad place to start if you don't have a clear problem definition or you're just exploring, you're just profiling, you're just kind of getting a sense for what the system is doing. Use a sketch provider to look at CPU. You can use a sysinfo provider. Uh, and you know each of these providers has a number of probes, many of which we're going to take a look at. Um, use a profile and tick provider, which I didn't tell you about yet, to see where the kernel is spending their time and where user threads are spending their time. All right. Um, in the interest of, how are we doing time-wise? Oh, not too bad. We're supposed to stop what time? Well. Joy said X o'clock maximum. But Joy said 8 o'clock yeah. maximum? She's unhappy. You, we, uh, you might want to check at 8 o'clock just to see okay. how folks are feeling. They get a bit All peckish. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I can see I'm losing half of them already. <laughs> um, that's okay. Uh, no, I'll, I'll uh, wind down. If I get close to 8 and it sounds like I'm going to do a lot more, throw something at Um. What's that? Something soft. Something soft. Thank you. If I had a book, I'd give you one. <laughs> Assuming you wouldn't throw it at because it is 1,200 pages. All right. So let's start taking a look at some of the stuff you can do. Um, these slides are available, so I'm not going to read this to you. Um, uh, so let, let's take a look at some of the interesting stuff you can do with D-Trace. Um, so these are uh, what we call one-liners, just using D-Trace from the command line uh, to take a look at you know, where your CPUs are spending their time. Um, so let me, uh, let me tell you, since they all use the profile provider, and I haven't told you about the profile provider yet, I guess now is a good time to tell you about the profile provider. Um, so I told you that, whoops, the screen thing is really, uh, sorry. okay. So I told you that, um, uh, a D-Trace probe is a, point, uh, is, uh, is a point of instrumentation in the software. And it's, it's, it's typically the entry, re entry or return point 
uh, of, of a function, but it, it lives somewhere in code. That's true for 99% of all your D-trace probes. The, the exceptions are uh, the profile and pick probes. Sometimes it's desirable to do time-based data collection as opposed to collecting data at a specific point in a code path. And that's what the profile and tick probes give you the ability to do. With the profile provider, I can say every 997 hertz, I want to, nope. sorry about that. Um, every 997 uh, hertz, or, mean, or 997 times a second, I want to, I don't know, I'll just do something simple. Uh, I'll, I'll just say, you know, give me the PID. The PID of what? The PID of whatever process was running on CPU when, when, when this probe fired. So basically what this probe is doing is it's sending a, a time-based probe on every CPU on the system. And 997 times a second on every CPU on the system, <coughs> This is a one CPU, well it's not a one CPU laptop, but there's only one CPU in my virtual machine. But this could be a 512 CPU uh, Oracle M9000. Could be a 512 CPU, you know, Niagara T5000 system. Um, it'll fire on every single CPU. And when it fires, it's going to give me the process ID, the process that was running on the CPU when the probe fired, and it's basically just going to tell me which PIDs were, were on CPU. And so this is just, you know, telling me I don't have anything interesting happening. PID zero, which is just a placeholder for the kernel address space, was on CPU most of the time. The point is, is that I can do time-based data collection with DTrace as well as instrument-specific areas of the function uh, in, in the kernel. I could do the same thing with the TIC probe. Whoops, if I can spell. The difference between tick and profile is profile fires on every CPU, tick will only fire on one CPU. That's the difference between those two probes. Profile on every CPU, tick on only one CPU. Now, um, interesting ways to use these providers, going back to going back to the slides, is um, uh, there's a variety of interesting things you can do when you're doing time-based data collection. Anybody know why I'm using a number like 997 hertz, by the way? Because it is kind of an odd number, right? <laughs> so um, the reason for that, and make a mental note of this, whenever you're doing time-based data collection on any Solaris system, probably any system at all, but certainly any Solaris system, use an odd number. Because Solaris does bureaucratic housekeeping at regular intervals, typically every 10 milliseconds. Is that what Andy, you in here? I think it's, I, I should know this. Yeah, um, 100 times a second. Every 10 milliseconds, the clock interrupt fires in Solaris, and it enters a speed clock interrupt handler, and it does a whole bunch of bureaucratic housekeeping. You know, accounting, system statistics, things like that. You don't want your data collection to align with that. You want to collect data in between those uh, 10 millisecond firings. So whenever I do time-based data collection on a system, I always use an odd number, just, just so it doesn't align with anything the system is going to do you know, as part of its bureaucratic housekeeping. It doesn't have to be 997. It could be 13. It could be 123. It could be, you know, depending on how often you want to collect data. All right, so uh, what can I do with some of these? Uh, what am I doing with some of these examples of using the profile provider? Well, in the top line, I'm using the count aggregation, and I'm just counting, uh, counting up period on, uh, and the name of the process using those two internal D-trace variables. I'm basically just using a time-based profile to say who's, uh, who's on the CPU, who's, give me a, a time-based sample of which processes are running on CPU. Now here, in the second example, I'm using a predicate. Remember, if it exists between these slashes, it's a predicate. And the profile provider actually has two arguments. Uh, and this gets to another area of D-trace that I didn't mention to you, because I was trying to keep it simple, is that one of the features you get with all of the different probes in D-trace 
is arguments that they make.